The global debate on climate change looms over the Hu Honua Bioenergy Project plan for the Hamakua Coast. The project is currently undergoing construction with efforts to become operational by the end of this year. The decades-long effort to transform the old Pepeakeo power plant into a biomass facility is nearly complete. We've already spent over $120 million to date following the Winter Planning Commission's approval of SMA Permit 221 back in 2011. But there are still a couple of legal hurdles in its way. One of those hurdles went before the Hawaii Supreme Court on October 25th. So Life of the Land uh, was granted participant status based on uh, its uh, specific aspects of its expertise. Uh, the state judiciary provided an audio recording of the proceeding. The Life of the Land nonprofit is appealing the Public Utilities Commission decision to approve a new power purchase agreement between Huho Nua and the Hawaii Electric Light Company. And it sought to intervene, uh, uh, sought to upgrade its status for intervention to explicitly allow it to address. Uh, specific uh, environmental issues related to climate change, greenhouse gas emissions, um, soil. Life of the Land was permitted uh, to participate in the PUC so proceeding, but only on certain PUC issues denied. as a limited participant. A motion to upgrade status, from participant to intervener was denied. And ultimately the PUC denied uh, Life of the Land's request to upgrade its status. The PUC determined that in fact nothing related to the environment was uh, within the scope of its participation, for, for, at least for the subsection involving prudence and the public interest. Attorney Lance Collins argued that the PUC failed to consider the effect the Huhonua project would have on greenhouse gases. The fact that it's a biomass project doesn't give the PUC license to look at the project through a keyhole and disregard everything that's going on in the project, to selectively choose parts of the project that the applicant um, wants the PUC to consider. The PUC is obligated to consider all of these factors. Well, the Public Utilities Commis Commission is, is required to consider um, greenhouse gas emissions, and in this case, they didn't. Uh, they do need to consider both the life cycle uh, issues like the trucking and the actual mechanical harvesting process right. and also the greenhouse gas emissions that um, are released during uh, the burning of the biomass. Uh, the PUC considered aspects of the decrease of fossil fuel and particular aspects of the project. It did not consider um, the entire project in terms of whether and what the total reduction uh, in fossil fuel use would be, but that's separate from greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, the two are conflated by the PUC, uh, but those are actually separate analyses, and the statute calls them out separately to be um, analyzed. And in fact, you could reduce uh, fossil fuels and increase uh, uh, gas emissions, couldn't you? Absolutely, and that's, that's life of the land's concern. Collins also argued his clients were denied due process when they weren't allowed to become full interveners in the docket. Well, in, in this appeal, we're asking that the decision in order be vacated uh, and that it be remanded to the PUC for new proceedings and also to uh, provide instruction on um, what the limits of the PUC's uh, powers are with respect to analyzing greenhouse gas emissions. Solicitor General Clyde Wadsworth responded on behalf of the Public Utilities Commission. The power purchase agreement at the heart of this case will increase renewable energy generation on Hawaii Island based on local biomass, displace the use of imported fossil fuels, and accelerate the retirement of fossil fuel plants and further the state's renewable energy goals. Do you think that the PUC has a duty to explicitly consider greenhouse gas emission? The power plant at issue here is fueled by a renewable energy source, biomass, not fossil fuels. State law defines renewable energy to include biomass, and biomass is treated the same way as solar and wind for purposes of the state's renewable portfolio standards. So state policy is to replace fossil fuels with biomass and other renewable energy resources. The Chief Justice asked you whether or not greenhouse gas emissions must be considered 
by the PUC when it makes these kind of decisions? Does it have to make findings? Does it have to consider? It, it, it does. By, even it, if it's biomass. It, it does it, by, by having to show that, that, that fossil fuels will be displaced by the renewable energy. Resources. So that's, so we should read into the statute where it says greenhouse gas emissions, except if the greenhouse gas emissions result from biomass no, I, I, I'm not suggesting that reading, Your Honor. I mean, but the, the premise of state law is that fossil fuels are linked to greenhouse gas emissions. If you displace fossil fuels, you displace greenhouse gas emissions. Right. And that, my question to you is, end of discussion? Based on the statute, that is the end of the discussion. But here, there is evidence in the record uh, concerning greenhouse gas emissions, which the Commission explicitly stated that it considered. Attorney Marjorie Bronster presented the arguments for Hu Honua. Life of the land is attempting to use 269-6 to throw out a renewable project in favor of continuing to use fossil fuel plants. I think what they're asking for is that the PUC follow what the statute says, which is to specifically consider greenhouse gas emissions and not, not even in their findings say it's not even an issue in the case. The fact that um, biomass uh, will reduce fossil fuels doesn't read out greenhouse gas emissions out of the statute. So with respect to um, whether or not it did specifically consider, we would submit that the record shows that it did, even though it did not outline that in the DNO. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change released its new report, which confirms the need to limit global warming to well below 2 degrees centigrade. Hanging over the entire proceeding like a dark cloud were recent news headlines painting a dire picture of accelerating climate change on Earth. The world has already warmed by 1 degree centigrade due to human activity, and as a result, climate change is already affecting people ecosystems and livelihoods around the world. The recent report issued by the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change and the disappearance of Hawaii's East Island in the wake of Hurricane Molaka were both mentioned in the court proceeding. Do, would you have to predict, for example, that Hawaii just lost one of its islands, East Island and the French frigate shoals? It's been completely lost in the past month. Is that sufficient to allege a damage? In your well, view. I mean, whether it is or is not is not something that I've specifically um, considered because I don't think that life of the land did even that. In the future or on remand, there's an opportunity to explain injury. Then that could be a, a, a rather large part of the docket to look at what the effects are of global warming, for example. I mean, the two and a half degrees, you know, given the Paris Agreement says two degrees is going to be an existential threat, and we're, there might be proof that we're going beyond two and a half degrees, and then perhaps that means the PUC really has to focus now if, in fact, we're headed towards however you define it, the degree of existential threat we're headed toward. Aside from the Supreme Court case, there is Hu Honua's National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System application. Hu Honua is seeking a permit to discharge stormwater associated with industrial activities into state waters, subject to special conditions. The bioenergy company is also applying for an underground injection control permit, as well as a solid waste permit for the recycling of ash. Of course, we will continue to work with other agencies, such as the Department of Health, to ensure that we are complying with all laws relating to water quality and discharge. The State Department of Health will hold a public information meeting and public hearing on these applications in Hilo on Wednesday, November 14th at Amy Loa Astronomy Center. The meeting begins at 10 a.m. Environmentalists plan to make their voices heard. This is not acceptable. You cannot bring coral back after it's been bleached. You cannot decontaminate an aquifer that's pristine. You cannot dispose of a mountain of ash with a snap of the fingers, no matter how many times you apologize, no matter how many exemptions you seek and are granted. A recent article in the West Hawaii Today reported that Hu Honua is trying to become operational by a December 31st deadline, or else it may lose a $100 million investment tax credit.